uh, uh, I guess a, a, a level yeah where you can enter potentially mid-range and here's one of them and it's really the level CPR right but there has to be obvious levels so um, you have to see yeah you have to see for example levels that have been this level has been touched sideways ranging market you can see it's kind of been in this range yeah because these guys yeah who are looking to the left are seeing okay this there, there's there's a level here right it's been touched several times we're entering into, into a sideways range of market we should want to do something like this and continue into that range yeah just buying highs and lows of ranges but what's end up happening is is that this has caught these traders to the uh, to the wrong side right <coughs> so yes if we're looking at the high of this range and the low of this range this is would be considered mid-range but it's a difference between this and understanding um, the mid-range based off of the level CPR and just a difference between that and something like like that that doesn't convince me that there's a range there it just convinced me that there's pretty just they are going to be traders caught here for sure but it just but for me it's not really the, the mid-range trades that I would like to take I know that there are more traders and this is more of an obvious trade for me um, because the level is so so obvious basically do you know what I mean it's, it's a very very obvious level and it's level traders that, that, that are going to get caught so for me this is a, a really nice trade and in fact I do have it up on my chart I'm looking at this right now again don't jump into this trade if you're not fundamentally aware of the New Zealand dollar Swiss franc and why you should be um, <clears throat> you know buying or selling of course do your do your analysis now um, one of the things I want to highlight is, or, yeah, one of the things I want to highlight is nobody knows where or if prices will will turn around here. I'm not saying that prices are 100% going to turn around here. No idea. Yeah. All I know now is I'm going to observe price, just observe, and wait. Yeah, for price, um, for for a trigger. Right. So this is a zone where I'm just waiting for a potential trigger if it occurs. Prices could keep going all the way down here. All right. Cool. That's just the way it goes, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna necessarily jump in. I wanna observe price, and if I see one of my triggers to candle swing, or you know, an outside candle entry, for example, yeah, within this area here, because again, I don't know how many orders need to be filled, for example, or how many, how much demand. Although I know the equation, as far as there's lots of traders who sold here, right? Mm -hmm. Sold here, have to exit to buy, yeah? Um, there's still other orders that need to be filled as far as you know more traders who need to get involved in this trade etc and what levels they're getting in that nobody knows so um for now it's definitely on my on my radar to look for buy trades if it turns around here brilliant the next level probably um or i would say probably these two zones but any i think anywhere within this zone of course you want to have as many confluences as possible there are I think if you probably zoom out even a little bit more, there are some. Uh, um, one second. Oh, okay. Sorry, I just thought that my mic was off. I was thinking that uh, that it, don't tell me I didn't record this because I would have been highly annoyed because I've got some things to do. But anyways, there's also another you know level, but just below that as well. One, two, three, four, five. So within this, within I think within this um this this demand zone, there are definitely um areas around where prices could want to potentially you know reverse so let's see what happens with that and i'm i'm keen to watch that you know myself um what else is there what else is there what else is there uh, but i hope that clears things up i think i hope it clears things up with that but yeah good uh, good chart and i think the other one was i want to talk about was really um uh, a hard trade right and when I say a hard trade I'm talking about the New Zealand Swiss franc right um, I was in this I was in this trade and uh, so I managed to get in on several positions but um, the entry I was going to go over and I did talk about this in the um, in one of the videos last week or it was, the, it was the group call right so here was really where we were talking about where there would be potential for a reversal. It was this zone here. So this was the level, 
this was the demand zone it was a, a level CPR yeah a level CPR and I said in the video last week that um, the, the first area to kind of look for you know any kind of long trade you know this is the level level and then these guys get captured you've got the capture you've got the pain and then you've got you know the relief yeah now the relief can be from the top yeah to the potential bottom right none of us know exactly where prices are going to turn around right but the point is, is that it's somewhere within you know this zone where that zone was and then we also had you know uh, an area where at the bottom of the zone we had a nice um, level of you know or, or a nice rejection right that's what we're actually looking for is is support and resistance to help us you know decide on where price may potentially start to um, uh, you know reverse from right so prices didn't necessarily react you know too favorably when we when prices came down into this zone right now the the the, the, the trade that I entered was here I told you guys about it last in last week's um, in last week's video I think it was the um, went over it in the group call right now if you had entered right it's a two candle swing so if you have your entries indicator on you will see all right for me the blue whenever this there's there's a, there's a blue um i change the color to blue anyway whenever there's a blue um uh, bar that tells me that that's the uh the, the entry candle from a two candle swing yeah so you've got your outside candles which which tell you here and here where, where there's outside candles somewhere around there green ones etc nice outside candle there or it will tell you where there is a, a two candle swing now on the three hour this actually closed at one o'clock but when I by the time I woke up in the morning prices had kind of come back down into what would have been the entry so I've decided to take the trade uh, take some positions and um, just going over if I had taken I took you know more than three positions but I don't advise you to um, but if you had taken let's say for example you had taken three positions right so you're taking a market entry which is here yeah which is right there you're taking a, um, uh, a one at 50 percent if it retraces back and then you then you're, you're trade taking one at the um, absolute low right so you should have three positions now on this one um, you got in really on the um, uh, uh, only on two positions so you want to place your stop loss at least say um, 10 pips plus spread so you know let's say for example 11 12 pips depending on your um, depending on your uh, you know your broker uh, New Zealand Swiss um, isn't necessarily uh, you know massive um, when it comes to you know spreads um, so so anyways that's where your stop loss is this is where your you know your 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 second position was and then you would have a, another position which would be here and let me just I guess uh, clone so that would be where your first position is let me just put that here and your stop loss is there right it's right there so yeah right first position and second position you're trying to go for at least at, I, I recommend at least two to ones that's what I do anyway before taking any kind of profit now prices did come after I, I, I entered one position you know and then and then a couple other positions but if I'd entered three positions right that second position there would have been um, you know filled right would have been filled and then um, when I say it was a, a potential you know I was saying when I say painful trade I, I didn't say necessarily I experienced any pain but let's say for example you were in that yeah and these are the things that happen we can't always expect price to just go straight to our target right and I know a lot of people might have been scared out of this trade as well yeah especially when it comes back but one of the things you have to accept when you're entering into a trade is you have to accept the loss you have to you know one of the things that I do is that I expect to lose every trade. Doesn't mean that I want to lose every trade or I'm going to lose every trade, but to manage my psychology, I've already accepted the loss. If prices, you know, go against me and I don't make any money on this trade or I lose money on this trade, then I've accepted the loss even before I've um, taken the trade. If you can't accept the loss before you take the trade, then don't trade, right? Just don't trade. You need to get your psychology right, and we can always help with that, yeah. And understand why you're you're not accepting you know the loss and understanding the law of large numbers um, and understanding you know just probabilities right 
But um, this was a trade that could have been potentially painful for a lot of people. So um, here was the uh, the trade and second position managed to potentially hit profit on um, the or just about hit profit on 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 this broker but on my broker i think i was must have been at least maybe half a pip away from being filled right so literally i woke up well I say woke up but i uh i um uh you know thought that i'd hit profit you know i think the next day or the day after and then realized that um in fact i must have been about a few literally about a, a quarter pip or half pip or spread away you know what i mean from um, from hitting targets right and then prices came all the way back so any profit that I had came all the way back right and I know a lot of traders would have been like oh my days do you know what I mean I what to do in this situation should I come out of the position I think that prices are going to continue to go down and you would talk yourself out of the trade I know because I've been there I have been there it's it's and that's why I say it's it's, it's potentially a painful trade because to see you know you're, you're 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 so close and this can happen you know it happens to me all the time you're so close to making profit so 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 close and then it's like it goes literally down and to the point where you're losing money now well not losing money but you know your account is in the negative right what you could have made is now evaporated in fact you know you're back down here how many people probably would have exited the trade or would have maybe tightened up their stop loss etc we have to just accept the trade for what it is. We have to accept that this is just random. This is totally, totally, totally random. Anyways, having faith in the fundamentals, New Zealand and Swiss franc, um, you know, prices did come back down and then managed to go in my direction. And then this morning, a nice pleasant surprise because I was filled, yeah, on my, on my order. Prices actually went a bit higher um, and filled on uh, one of my orders so now this is for me um, uh, a slightly profitable trade uh, at, at worst a break-even trade so um, but if you were entering uh, if you had only entered into two positions <coughs> what you want to do is actually first of all is you want to now cancel the pending order at the low right there um, and now you want to actually swing trade so now what you what what you know your position the position that you should be in is you should have made a two to one on this so let's say for example you risk uh, 0.1% on each trade which I always advise or the smallest amount you can you can uh, you can do so 0.1 is your risk now you made a two to one which is 0.2 you bank that right take that off the table right take your risk off the table from that third position now you can swing trade this one position here now i don't know whether this is going to go to the heavens hopefully it does if it doesn't then it doesn't right if you if you get stopped out if prices come down stop us out right we lose 0.1 percent we banked 0.2 percent and we're up 0.1 percent right profitable trade and then we just wait for the next level none of us know where prices may turn around it might come all the way back down and then give us a nice little uh, stop hunt trade right because here is you can see start to see now where there is a potential for a stop hunt right we've got a nice ranging market again in our from our time frame perspective we want prices to go higher but the, the financial institutions are accumulating this may be the point where they are accumulating right this is where they're buying over the you know over you know a week or two or three or maybe a month or two it might take them to um to accumulate right so prices may go, go to the upside or prices may go to the downside stop us out cool all right no worries next trade right wait for this type of scenario to happen and then just continue to potentially get long